Hey guys, my name is SigmaOT1 and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword 6 Hard Run Extravaganza of Awesome Plus Thirst Minus anything to drink Plus Tornadoes We're in for an awesome time today Oh, I got caught in a tornado I got caught in a tornado! No! And yes, you do lose health from getting caught in a tornado It sucks, but it happens and it's realistic, so unfortunately that's not something I can really complain about other than I can't avoid the tornadoes because they're hard to avoid. Let's go into the side. This part of the Sky Left Over World was previously inaccessible because it's just blocked off by the clouds. Okay, and we go. So we got some monsters here that we should probably avoid in order to plow into or not. You hit them in the tail and they die. They can easily hurt you. Oh god, I got them, I got them. Oh wait, I'm out of place. I'm fine, I'll be fine, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. Don't worry about that rainbow, it's very enticing, but that's obviously not where we're gonna look at. I mean, there's a, there's a pillar thing. You thought we weren't supposed to look at the pillar thing? Then think again, because that is what we are supposed to look at. Look at it, I want all of you to look at it. So we need to to go here first in this puzzle. This is a puzzle. It's gonna be a very confusing puzzle because it, well, I, I, it's, a, it's a neat idea for a puzzle, but holy god, it's hard. It's it's really hard to do. Master Sigby, I have been raised at this island. He is known as the Isle of Sons, the science of things that have been sent here to you, but not as Master. However, I am running to determine the means of entry and structure ahead as I just investigate the area. Okay, what you have to do these, there are these switches that bring up these pillars, and what you want to do is you want to. Wait, wait where's the thing that allows you to push? Oh, yeah, it's, it's in the center here. When you push this, it has to be the other side though, it has to be here. Then you will move these statue things and they will do this. They, they will move the platforms that you need over here. Uh, this is a very confusing puzzle, trust me, it's hard, it's hard to get a feel for, but once you do, maybe not so bad. It's easy when gold on one I got out of bed. And the statues will prevent the progress of some of the things from moving, which is something that you want. You want to line them up, somehow. Okay, that one is lined up. Now, let's see. Slash it like that. See if that gets us anywhere. Should. I mean, it'll stop. It'll stop that one, but... Oh, wait, no, it didn't. Okay, let's see if I can figure out which... Slash from above. Okay, that, that should do. Should be able to line them up pretty good here. This might be the fastest that I've ever solved this puzzle. Jerry, I regret it, I've ever, only ever done this puzzle twice before, but, you know what? Okay, so... Now all three of them are lined up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the pillars. And I think we got it. See, that wasn't so bad, actually. It was not as bad as I was anticipating. See? <laughs> Pretty easy. So actually, I do like this idea for a puzzle. It's like, everything, every time I say something in this game is hard, I... I do it pretty quickly. So, that's the Let's Play Curse in a nutshell. That's what happens in, oh, I'm running low on battery power in my Wii Remote. Well, if it goes, it gets to a certain point, I'll change the batteries. Anyway, let's, let's not have the change of perspective affect any gameplay. Locked in. Actually, I do have a backup save file, so there's that. Fi's just gonna tell me that I need to change the batteries in my Wii Remote. I'm not gonna pay attention to her. Let's hit this thing with a Skyward Strike because it looks like all the other things we had to hit with a Skyward Strike. <clears throat> That's actually pretty good logic. It's not bad logic at all. You watch this cutscene with the, the low battery meter. <laughs> Deal with it. Oh, 
Master Sigri, I have important information. When you struck the crest with a star would strike your sword, a message from the goddess awakened to you within my memory. The goddess intended this message for you, Master. These are her words. He who seeks the sacred flames, listen well, for I guide you from my place at the end of time. The sacred flames are three in number. To obtain them, you must earn the relics well as three sacred gifts. For each trial you overcome, you shall be blessed with one of the gifts. Make use of the power of the gifts, and you will find your way to the pure, fine sacred flames. Now I bestow onto you a melody, the insert as a key, opening the first trial that awaits you deep in the wilds of barren woods. The song is called for Roar's Courage. It's rousing melody. Look, I do. You got a song! Even though it doesn't really matter how you play the harp, you'll play exactly the song that you need to play. Master, you must overcome the trials set before you to obtain the three leaves to reach the sacred flames. I have committed for Roar's Courage to memory. Now you use your doubting ability to search for the gate to the first rally in space. I suggest you set off with Aaron once as soon as you are ready. Okay. This is what I think can be considered the second third of the game that we're unfolding here, or at least the second in the three parts. I'm not sure if they're evenly divided. They probably aren't really, but the first part was finding the I mean, was finding the things. The second part was finding the its flames. And the third part, bringing it all home and defeating Garahim once and for all. Change the batteries after I'm done with this recording session. Sorry about that. Sometimes my capture card does that, and I don't know why. And no, just because something appeared that belongs on a computer on my uh, on my recording, that does not mean I'm playing from an emulator. If well, I I wouldn't want to emulate a game like this anyway. I'm playing this off of the actual console. I'm not sure why you would think I'm not. Well, I told you how I record this. I told you, and I've gotten money. I used to think that you would record an image off, not, to record a game, you record it off the TV, but that is not the case. You record it off your computer. And I'm gonna sneeze. Oh, go away, go away, go away, you havens of the night. Okay, so like I said, we need to go to Farron Woods, and this is, this is a part of the game that many people consider a Twilight Princess, usually in a negative light. But for me, I don't mind. In fact, I think it's actually better than the, the uh, identical mechanic in Twilight Princess. I will explain why I think that later. The similarities are very much there, but they do tackle it differently and it is for a different purpose. That actually doesn't have a thing. No, it does, it does. Should I try to aim for it? Yep, I did. I aimed for it. Now it's the Farron Woods. The Farron area of the game. So we're gonna need to do that. Come on. Let's do this. Let's dive into the exciting world of Farron Woods. <sighs> Down we go. Okay, I think for this, we're gonna wanna be about here. I don't know exactly where we need to be, but I think that's, that's pretty close. We don't want to be too far into the woods, but we do want to have a place... Oh, <laughs> I just tapped the button and it happened. Okay. Uh, come on. The reports, Master Sigby. I have detected the aura of the trial gate nearby. You told me to come here. No, duh. Okay. All right, let's... Let's figure out where to go. I'm getting no reading. There we go. There we go. 
It's that easy. Wanna go over there? I wish that I had a more concrete place to look rather than just over. Oh, it's over like here now. You know, I was, I'm gonna fight you. I wasn't gonna fight you because I thought, hey, I'm a nice guy. But then I realized I'm not a nice guy. I don't like bats. Bats. Uh, I pretty much figured out that was gonna happen as soon as I climbed on the friggin' ledge. Oh, I don't want my shield out. Am I gonna bring it out? Nah, I don't need to yet. Actually, okay, there it is, there it is. I didn't have to travel very far. Okay, I didn't have to cut any footage out. Because everything I said was interesting. Yes. Alright. There's butterflies here, and you can see a bit of an aura coming from here, so let's strum. We got more strumming to do. Strum, strum, strum. Alright, Fi's gonna help us keep time again. Something here is really acting to our performance of Ferrara's courage. I have confirmed the appearance of a strange mark to the ground. I calculate a 90% possibility that this mark is the trial gate, as mentioned by the goddess statue that you have heard from the Isle of Psalms. Thrust your sword into the center of the mark upon the ground below before you. I'm not gonna read what she's saying. Basically, we are in a spirit world, and in the spirit world, we are defenseless. We don't have a sword. I don't know why. It's actually spirit silent, or whatever. There's four of these in the game, I do believe. And in each of these, you are tasked with traversing the world in order to get these goddess tears. So it is very similar to. It's very similar to getting the tears in Skyward Sword. I, this is Skyward Sword, I mentioned Twilight Princess, uh, but there's a bit of challenge added to it. There's a stealth element, and, well, yeah. If you get hit by a monster, they will destroy you, but if you collect these tears, they'll actually stand still for a minute. There's 15 of these that we need to collect, and then we need to make our way back to this entrance to the portal of the spirit world. This is a silent realm. Like, okay, you're talking a lot, Fi, and that's why I opted not to read your text. Also because I don't want to have to do too much of the echo effect in post-production. So there's that. Please stop. Yep, 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 yep. There's also areas that if you step in them, they will automatically alert the statues to your presence. Don't get hit once or you're going to have to start the whole thing over. Okay. Yeah, as soon as you step out, those statues will be waiting for you and they're not going to give you hugs and kisses. They're going to destroy your soul. They make it sound all epic and like you're gonna die if this happens, but you can take your time. And if you collect one of these, you actually get a beacon. Uh, you get beacons that tell you where all the, all the tears are in the world. So it's a bit easier than in Twilight Princess, I think. You might want to get some sort of strategy going where you collect these things that'll unveil the beacons. You might also they'll recover your your meter of stamina. Otherwise, on your stamina meter, those those guys with the lights, if you get caught in the lights, your, the, the robots, or the statues, they're going to know of your presence immediately, regardless of whenever you last touched one of those things. And the same goes for that water. Don't touch that water. 
I can tell the nice people at home. I'm not gonna read your text again. Like, once I'm done with this, I think I'm gonna be done for this recording session. It might take a while, but uh, I think it'll be a good place to stop after I manage to do this. Or actually, go a little bit after it's maybe I'll do that as well. Depends on how I'm feeling. I know I'm feeling thirsty. All right, during one of the cutscenes, I did, I did use the moment to get a swig of my Pepsi, but other than that, yeah, I'm going off very little. I mean, very little refreshment, I guess you could say. We're actually running low on the beacons. There's a, there's a beacon fruit there. I don't know if it's actually a fruit. I don't know what you call this. I, I compare it to a pearl because it looks like a friggin' pearl. And there are areas that are blocked off so that you don't have to go too far your way only to find that there's no tears that you can find. Alright. Let's see. I definitely want to get that one. That's the tight rope. Come down first, get your stamina up, Slink. You don't really need stamina in order to cross this. Whatever. Plus, it's actually kind of easy. This is kind of easy. There we go. There we go. Did it. Jump off. Let's not get hit by that. And here's a Dusk Relic. This is the earliest in the game that you're able to get a Dusk Relic by going into these areas. So if you see those Relic, you might want to pick it up, because otherwise they're not too common. And I'll help you get some pretty sweet equipment, I'll tell you what. Let's see. Get this one. Get this one. There we go. <laughs> I'm a master of puppets. We have five left. Okay, that pool is actually going to... Ooh, let's just do it, yeah. <laughs> I think I did it right as soon as it was gonna expand again. In which case, Clutch. Clutch, thy name is me, sick of being. I think the uh, Skrillex also respawn if you have to redo the, the Silent Realm areas. So that is useful, I suppose, if you're looking to grind for some Dusk Relics. It's grinding. It's not like getting levels. Alright, let's get the beacons. And another beacon. These beacon things all over the place. They might as well just keep the beacon up the entire time. Okay, there's two left. Let's see one over there. And let's see. I don't think they're marked on the map. Yeah, the ones that are on the map there, they're the ones that you've already got. Okay, there's one over there. I think I want to go for that one first. Not get caught by your light. Or I could have gotten caught by your light and. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh, I avoided it. As you can see, there is some leniency as to where in the light you can be before it says you're caught. And I might as well get caught there because I'm actually very close to a, to a tier. We got it. Yep, like that. We got the last one. Will continue if you get to the, until you get to the silent realm. I don't think that your meter will go down, though. I think the only way that the statues will be able to catch up with you again is if you get caught in the you know, light. And I think I did it pretty well because see, right there, it's the entrance to the gate. That did not take very long. See, these things don't have to be in shore. They can actually be pretty fun. I like them at least. They're challenging and fun. They they break up. Well, the gameplay, I think this game actually has a lot more variety than I think some people give it credit for. Anyway, here's the Water Dragon Scale. Single will allow you to do tricks underwater. And that is awesome. Yeah, it's like getting dungeon items outside of a dungeon. If you really think about it. You really stop to think about it. Congratulations, Master Sakabi. You have passed this trial. You are all in charge of the location of the first sacred flame that will enhance your sword. The Water Dragon Sail is one of the goddesses of the The Great Spirit of the Water Dragon has provided you with the ability to swim freely underwater. The flame you seek somewhere within these woods, Master, I just went through the flame is likely in front of the area you are on the sword. I know where it is. 
there's something new to no there's not Okay, what do you have to say? I might as well get a hint from you before stopping. Oh, hello again. I see you have the water dragon scale there, Q. That's amazing. I heard that if you have one, Q, you can swim through the water like a dragon source in the sky. Hmm. There must be places in the woods that you haven't visited yet, Q. You should use the water dragon scale to explore areas you couldn't even get to before, Q. Ho ho ho. And there is one such location. What right over here? In the next episode of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword on a six heart run. We will be exploring that area and see what it has to offer us. Take care. <laughs>